in the Discord, I did say, look, I personally think, unless bad news comes out, of course, I don't see any reason why we do not push up by 50% more, up to about 0.4, 0.39. This will then become the next, and this will be a huge level of resistance. That was a clip from our last video on the 6th of February. I'm delighted to say that that has played out exactly how it should have. And I am delighted to say that since that video, we are up over 20%. Did you buy? Did you? Did you buy? Welcome back, everyone, to Buy Wholesale. I hope, of course, you are all well. Doing this video, bringing it to you on a Sunday. Let's set up for the week ahead, what to be expecting, what the hell happened on Friday. A lot of crying, a lot of moaning, a lot of uh, upset people. However, there really was nothing to worry about. In the Discord, I said I didn't want any news. This was on the 8th before the opening bell. I didn't want any news. Let the anticipation carry us higher. It's when George Roach speaks. It's when he does anything, that's when we get in trouble. Obviously, I'm kind of joking, but not untrue to what actually happened on Friday. The man spoke and the thing sunk. There's no doubt about it. There's inside trading going on. It's AM stock, guys. It's penny stocks. If you don't like it, don't be in it. If you don't like it, the Wild West, don't enter the Wild West. I did say here as well that, look, we're massively overbought. And I, the charts would say we're going to have a cool off. It needed a healthy pullback. That's just natural. And once we hit the 0.4, or perhaps the 200-day moving average, it was going to always sell off. RSI, MACD, everything was saying, cool off, cool off, cool off. So, yes, perhaps it was a case of buy the rumor, sell the story. But to be honest with you, and I said this in the Discord as well, there really wasn't anything of great value for me from that RNS. It was a lot of assuming this happens, this will happen, and, you know, if this was to happen, if, 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 and, you know, you don't can't live your life by ifs and buts. At the end of the day, it's about delivery. I've said it in the channel for about the last six months. They need to get to production. That's what the market wants to see. If this happens, and maybe this means nothing, really. There's a show that I'm sure most of you will probably know if you're from the UK called Only Fools and Horses. Did you know that they did a terrible American reboot? Shocking. Pilot. Terrible. Uh, worth watching, though. It's shocking. But anyway, there's a character in that most people will know as Del Boy. And what he always says, this time next year, we'll be millionaires. Just because he says something's going to happen doesn't mean it's necessarily going to happen. And that's kind of what that RNS read like to me. It was a lot of ifs and buts. But the key takeaway for me was that it did not say production by the end of February. It says production during February. And that's a change again. That's the tech. That's the terminology that I'm looking for in these RNSs. The key thing is production. Production, this thing pops. Production means no more penalties, no more risk of going bust, no more, hopefully, further dilution that's required. We will start actually making money, and that is what this market is expecting, and that is what this market wants to see. So combining all those things and the fact that it was dropped on a Friday, you don't drop RNSs on a Friday. It's just never good. It never happens. Na naturally, most people, especially in penny stocks, like to take some money off the table. They don't particularly like to hold over the weekend. If you're a trader as well, you close your positions over the weekend because World War III could break out. You don't want to take that risk. So dropping an RNS and all the things that we said, terrible on a Friday. So it's cooled off, and we'll look at the charts now before we get into a little bit of fundamental stuff um, towards the end. This is played out, as you can see here, straight in. You can zoom right in on this. We'll just look right at it. As good as touched. And people say TA doesn't make a difference. It very much does. This is support and resistance, as we've talked about. It's hit this level. Now we've got strong, and I said this in the last video, this is going to be difficult to break through. It will be difficult. And then we've got the 200-day moving average. And on top of that, we don't have a huge amount of volume. Not compared to these levels. The volume, as you can see, is not there. But I do expect it to tick on. Is it going to happen on Monday? Is it going to happen on Tuesday? I'm not entirely sure. Since the video, we can see still we're up over 20%. Be happy. Stop crying. Yes, it would be lovely to have continued the 40% rise and continued rallying. Personally speaking, I got so burned. iWeb didn't execute my order. I put a small order to sell, sticking to the plan, and it didn't go through. So I could sit and cry about it. But listen... I'm actually fairly confident with the terminology of during February for production. I am getting rather excited about that. Um, and I think, you know, this is only really a matter of time. I just hope that it does tick on and I will still be trimming at 0 0.4 if I can get the friggin' order through. That's my plan. But if we get above that and get above this 200-day moving average, the next place, without a shadow of a doubt, 
is bringing us up in and around 0.57, probably even lift that slightly higher, 5, 8. In and around that range, I've been saying for about the last six months, I believe 0.6 is fair value for Prem. So there is so much more upside still. I mean, that's going to get you another 50%. I mean, how much do you want? Phenomenal. And if you're buying from the lows of the highs, and shout out to, well, I'll not name him because I don't want um, people to to go out of their way to rob him because he is a rich, rich man right now. But he bought at 0.17 and he is a very happy camper up over 100% on his gains. And if he was to continue holding to even the fair value of a 0.577, He's going to be looking in and around 264% in gains. Phenomenal. And there's people asking, well, how much can you get? I'm, I'm new to this game. This is this isn't a lottery ticket, guys. You need to learn about it. I just don't I don't answer people how much can you make. It's all ifs and buts. It's all ifs and buts. Let's just get their production. Let's just get down the road. And you can start looking at the next level, the next target. For example, who's to say that George Rose gets us the production? We start making money. The phone rings, it's Elon Musk. He says, hello, George. And George goes, hello, who's this? And he goes, it's Elon Musk. And he goes, what? And Elon goes, listen, I want to fly out first class. I've heard good things about Zulu. And he goes, okay, they fly out. He gets on the yacht with Elon Musk. Elon goes, listen, I need lithium by the bucket load. Can you sort it out? (laughs) Yeah, of course I can. I've got Zulu, you know, 19 years worth of, of a lifespan. I've got you covered here, Elon. Elon and George on the front of the Times magazine. The top two entrepreneurs featured cover George Rose's faces all around the world. Premier African Minerals end up buying out Tesla. Tesla then is under George Roach's watch. George Roach ends up working until the grave. The man has a legacy that has left. Netflix pick up that legacy and make a four-part series that's on Netflix, a limited series only, but actually never leaves Netflix. Becomes one of the most watched documentary series of all time. So much, they make a feature film too, with a prequel and a sequel to George Roach's life and how much his legacy has impacted the future for not only my generation, your generation, your kids' generation. This is something that will be taught about in schools. If all that was to happen, what would the share price be? That's my point. Who the hell knows what's going to happen? But one thing we do know is plant activation is scheduled within the next sort of two weeks. We're fingers crossed and for that. As we get closer to production, as I said at the start of the video, your debts, your risk of going bust, all the, the issues that you have, shareholders pushing out, share price going down, all of that risk that is huge goes down considerably. Now, we will have an issue with funding, but chances are, and he's kind of said this in other videos, that we're not going to have to go for, down further route down the route of dilution. We're hoping that this is going to be some sort of loan, maybe CalMax will help out, some sort of uh, you know, bank loan or whatever. I don't think it's going to be a huge issue if we get to production. We'll probably get a mill update sort of Tuesday, Wednesday next week. We've seen lovely pictures of how they're stacking it on a couple of old uh, breeze blocks, which looks like you know health and safety is definitely at the forefront of their thought process there. We've also got recent results with lead and tantalum levels, and we've received some interest, supposedly, so maybe get a bit more clarity on that. As I said in my made-up story about Elon Musk, there is a lifespan of about 19 years of this site, so you can imagine every year they were knocking this out and turning this out, 19 years worth of do re me. What kind of market cap would that give the company? And manual sorting as a contingency plan for the UV sorter, highlighting the separation simplicity of it all. So, I mean, yeah, you don't really want that to happen, but at least it goes, well, we've got a backup plan. And I like that. I like backup plans. What happens if this doesn't happen? Well, we've got a backup plan. The boys will start throwing it in the back of the machine. Okay, Grant, let's just get the production. The key thing is that we stay above this support level of around 0.32, 0.31. If we fall below that, do not panic. If we fall to 0.3, do not panic. It's all about the close, how it closes. Because on Friday, we seen, what, an 18 19% drop. Then it finished up around 12% down. Kept above the 0.32 level. And to be bullish, usually after a massive sell-off, there is a pump. So look, calm. It was all in the cards. It had to pull. Unfortunately, things just can't keep going up and up and up. It does have to, to settle and cool off. And just for examples... Look at this run here. What happened? We had a red day. It cooled off, ripped on, ripped up, sort of sideways, bit down, ripped on. That's charts, that technical analysis. If you want to learn this here so you don't panic and you understand what's happening, trading courses down there. If you want to join the Discord just to get my lovely voice notes and my insights. Plus, we have some great members of the Discord who have valuable information coming in there. The guys know who they are. We've got a good community. We're 
predominantly mostly talking about Premier African Minerals right now, understandably. We're excited at what's happening. I hope you're all doing well. You're enjoying the gains. Don't let Friday beat you down. It was only another bump on a very bumpy long road. We know where this is going. Fairly confident now we're going to get this by the end of February. So let's friggin' go, guys. I'll be chatting to you throughout the week. Enjoy the rest of your day.